Electric Mary are a pretty special band to me, not only because they're absolutely killer live and on tape, but um, they really helped me to find myself as a front man um, with my old band Nat Cole and the Kings. Um, see, we met uh, when they were supporting Deep Purple and I'd gotten up on stage with Steve Morse to play Smoke on the Water and I got a call from Rusty like a few weeks later asking if I wanted to fill in um, for their tour. They were um, playing the World, C- World Cup in South Africa, um, they were flying to France, um, they were playing Hellfest, scatter gigs around France, Belgium and, um, and then New York. And when I felt like the conversation was going that way, I um, was already on the back foot. Like I, I kind of was like, nah. And um, a few reasons. One, I was just about to launch my band, Nat Cole and the Kings. Uh, I was hard up for cash. But the real reason, I was afraid. Because during that period, I, I was starting to suffer pretty um, badly with anxiety and insomnia. I was going through this crazy mortality freak out. Um, on a daily basis, I was pretty much feeling terror. So the idea of getting on a plane, flying around the world with people that I don't know, and at the same time having to be accountable as a guitar player, um, you know, for their show. I mean, if they, if I fuck up, In my own set, I'm only disappointing myself, but I'd be letting down all these guys. This is their baby. Um, But then another part of me said, just just stop, pause, and have a think about it. Like, don't say no. So when I was thinking about it, number one, I love the songs. I love the band. The whole idea of playing with them excited me. Uh, Number two was... If I had any shot of enjoying the experience of growing Nat Cole and the Kings, I was going to have to move through these fears. So here is an opportunity where I'm going to be touring without the pressures of tour managing, promoting, you know, doing all the band logistics and all that. I was just going to be on the road as a guitar player, you know, not even as a front man, not even singing, just doing what I do, what I feel like I do best, and that's just playing guitar. Um, So I said, yeah. I fly down to Melbourne to do the first rehearsal. I could not wipe the smile off my face. Like, it was one thing to practice playing their songs in my studio, but to play it loud with them, oh my God, I still remember the feeling. The first show was pretty interesting because I'm warming up about 20 minutes before stage, feeling pretty good, going through the parts, till this fucking voice entered my head that said, Hey, guess what? This is the first time Electric Mary fans are going to see Electric Mary without Erwin Thomas and you're going to be in his place, which freaked me the fuck out because I'm looking at, you know, the crowd going, they don't seem like the nicest of crew. Like, if I mess this up, I'm probably going to be dime bags. So I took that fear onto the stage and it was bubbling away for that, you know, those first couple songs, but, you know... I looked at the crowd, they seemed like they were digging it. And besides, it's really, really hard to be thinking about anything else when you're playing Electric Mary songs with Electric Mary. And I I remember the feeling of that gig, like being able to let loose as a guitar player, the meaty riffs, the killer songs. I got off stage going, this tour is going to be sick. A few tour highlights. The first one would have to be Hellfest because... You know, every single heavy metal, hard rock and punk band around the world was pretty much playing Hellfest. Um, Alice Cooper, Slash, Motorhead, Twisted Sister, Anthrax. Um, Electric Mary was scheduled on first on main stage day two, I think it was, 11 o'clock in the morning. And I remember we were traveling uh, by bus throughout the night, sleeping on the floor. And we arrived at like six in the morning and... I thought, man, it's it's a shame that we're travelling all this way to play, you know, the first slot on main stage and day two people are going to be hung over, nobody's going to be there. Sure enough, we get up on stage and all we see is just green. It's just empty. We wait for five minutes. Should we wait for a few people to turn up? No, we can't. We've got, all right, let's start, start the big, epic, electric Mary rocking um, intro. Seriously, this is how you know festival patrons are here for the music because within eight bars it was like an army it was like game of thrones i just saw them popping up over the horizon just charging for us until we're playing to a big black sea of rock pigs it was a sick gig it was so so awesome probably not one of my finest musically because i think 
there was just so much built up uh, around doing this gig that that's a classic example of when you know expectations are high and you really really put so much emphasis on performing a certain way that your adrenaline can you know make you overshoot and you slip over the law of diminishing returns but great gig great hang incredible hangover For a completely different reason, I really enjoyed playing Spirit of 66 in Belgium. Um, It just sounded killer. That room was sensational. The PA was great. The acoustics were awesome, like Timbo, the right amount of ambience. I remember rocking up the sound uh, sound check and seeing my least favourite Marshall waiting for me. And I remember going, oh, man, has he got something else that that I can play and the guy there is like, yeah, why don't you just have a look behind the curtain? There are a couple little combos. I'm like, oh, how do you play an electric Mary set with a combo? And I pull back the curtain and there's like a vintage AC30. I'm like, cool. And then this, I've never seen it before, like a, a white JCM 800 combo. So I put the two together and that was one of the best hard rock sounds I've ever pulled. And it was a a really, really cool gig. And there was a lot of sort of synchronicities between all of us. One of my biggest challenges was probably dealing with my fear of flying. Like there were a lot of flights in that tour. Spend a bit of time scanning the itinerary, just hoping that I'd find a familiar airline. SA, what's SA? Oh, South African Air, okay. What the fuck is ET? Ethiopian Airlines, what the hell are we doing flying Ethiopian Airlines? So I Googled it and like four or five months beforehand, terrorists had hijacked a plane and crashed it into the desert. So I was feeling pretty nervous approaching that flight. So I'm walking down that, you know, tunnel of death and uh, I hand my ticket to the hostess and I look into the plane and it's old, it's dinosaur old, like the overhead lockers that are on rollers and then the projector screen at the end. And I even say to the lady, like, it's a pretty old plane. Um, And she's like, yeah, you know, we've got high traffic. Um, Trying to support the World Cup, we've had to dig out our old fleet. And this is actually the first overwater route this plane's done uh, in a long time. Why the fuck would you tell a passenger that? Like, seriously, get on the plane. I don't like taking pills. Pop to Valium pretty quickly. And just as I'm up in the air and it's starting to kick in, the shit-stirring drummer says, did you pop a pill? I'm like, yeah, I just need to just chill out. Hopefully I'll just fall asleep and wake up on the ground. It's like, yeah, but if something goes wrong, don't you want to be sort of alert and with it? I'm relaxed. I can't be too relaxed. Ah, relaxed. I can't be too relaxed. When I returned to Oz, I was on cloud nine. I was feeling so high. My world went from being this big to this big. Like, I kicked so many goals and I got to test myself um, mentally and physically. And it just gave me this confidence. Like, I can actually do anything um, I want to do. And that Electric Mary energy bled into Nat Cole and the Kings because that first rehearsal back... The songs went from being good to alive, um, which is exactly where they needed to be. So Nat Cole and the Kings were heavily influenced by my experience with Electric Mary. And, you know, it's still to this day, it's an experience that I draw on for strength, to remind myself of my capabilities, um, and a reminder to be authentic, to just be true Um, to you and what you want to do musically. That's literally what those guys are all about. Um, I couldn't be more grateful for them being in my life.